Hey, this is Daniel Norton. I'm here in my studio in New York City, and today we're photographing a car. Well, a little tiny car. So, I decided to make this video because I often like, make statements, or when I'm doing other kinds of videos, I make kind of like a generic statement about something, and I don't really go into it, and I get a lot of questions about it. One is about depth of field and distance, and like photographing small things, and the other thing is about the size of your light uh, affecting how hard or soft it is. You know, usually we're doing it with a person and I'm kind of moving it closer, but if you think about it, this right now I'm using a, a, a one foot square box and compared to this car, it is gigantic, right? This box is pretty small. On a person, for most portrait type things, it's gonna be a relatively hard light. And we did that video a while back, softbox hard light. On this car, it is gonna be super, super soft, which is exactly what we, what we need. When you're photographing uh, cars, or really any product, a large overhead light source uh, on top is gonna give you nice, even light to at least get you started. I mean, it, at least as, your, uh, as a starting point. So, what we're gonna do is first I'm gonna set up the shot here, and then I wanna talk a little bit about kind of a depth of field. So I'm using, again, I have this little tiny car here. Um, I've got uh, my Canon camera, I have the uh, Erix 150 macro. So I have a macro lens because I'm gonna get in really close, right, because the car is so tiny, I wanna fill my frame with it, right? Does that make sense? So. What I'm gonna do is, we'll go over here, I think if I go like this, and then live view, and then I also turn on live view here, guys, I think you should be able to watch it and capture one. Yep, you see it there, okay. So, first of all, I'm gonna look through the back of the camera, basically using live view. Now, if you had a mirrorless camera, uh, you know, it would be like this as well. In the, in the DSLR, I gotta put it in live view. Uh, mirrorless camera, you can just look through the viewfinder, I guess. The reason why I want to do it like this, with and I mean, clearly I can look through this viewfinder too, but I want to see it through, the, through here because it's going to help me tremendously with my focusing. What I'm going to do here is I'm on a tripod, I'm going to use my punch in, right? Because I'm so close to this thing. It's going to be really hard to get a nice tack sharp focus. So I'm going to punch in, and I'm going to focus. Now where you focus, you know, that's going to be a, a thought, right? I think in this one I'll focus on the front tire, and I'm going to do, you guys can see that. I'm doing the feature where it closes down the lens to my actual f-stop, I'm at f8. So I can see. I mean, that's pretty decently in focus. Focus when you're wide open though, guys, because you want to get it as, as exactly where you want it. And then, press that in to see how deep it is for you. So I think what we'll do is, I'm gonna close the wide view here. I can actually access my camera better. And we're gonna pop in here, and we're gonna focus nice and tight on this, basically on this wheel. In the center of the wheel, basically. Cool. This is a very old car. Uh, found it in some old stuff that I had, I think it was when I was a kid, so. Not that that was that long ago. Okay, so, this looks great. I'm at uh, 25th of a second at F8. So, again, I'm using hot light. You could, of course, use a strobe for this. And here we go, nice and close, right? And we can see that my depth of field is going to be pretty tight. The front of the car is slightly out. The wheel is mostly in, like I said. You can see cool detail here, though, with this lens, it's so sharp. But look at how out of focus the back is. You know, it's funny because you look at like parallel lines, right? So this here is, is kind of sharp, and then the wheel is sharp here, like this, right? You can actually see the, which is actually one of the really cool things about macro, right? You can create these really dramatic shots where you have this like super shallow depth of field. I could close down more, but your lens tends to be the sharpest kind of around F8, F11, and also ultimately it's gonna take more light. There's lots of reasons not to. I mean, if I had no choice, that's what I would do. But what I often find myself doing with a small product and stuff is actually using a camera that has a larger megapixel count, so not this one, <laughs> this only has 20, um, if I know I have that project, and then what I'll do is I'll actually shoot further back, and this is where Capture One can be really great. So I'll take my camera and I'll move it back. Right, so now I'm gonna come back further, you know, with the intention of cropping. This is, this is basically my, my idea here, so because I move back, I have to raise the camera because I'm at an angle. So I'm gonna to try to get the shot to be, you know, similar. It's not gonna be exactly the same. You could get it exactly the same if you want to spend a lot of time doing that, but I don't think we need to do that. 
right, so I'm gonna kind of dial in, get kind of a similar angle. And again, this is one of these great things about either if you're using a mirrorless camera or if you're using a DSLR and you want to punch in using live view. I can, I'm so far away from this thing. Let me kind of show you guys here how far away I am. Go over the camera mode, boom. You can see how far away I am, right? But I can actually punch in so I can see what I'm doing. So now, cool. It doesn't keep the punch in there when I do it this way, guys, so I have to turn it off for you, but you get the idea. Okay, so I'm gonna punch in here so I can get a good focus. Another thing you want to do is if you're doing a tremendously long exposure, um, I would do mirror lockup if your camera has that feature. For this, I don't think we really need to worry too much about that. So I'm going to focus in the same spot, more or less. Cool. Punched into 10 times. Okay. All right. Make that shot. And we can see how much more depth of field we have, right? So we come in here like this. Actually, we have a little camera shake there, so I might actually do mirror lockup. But just to show you guys, this is my first shot, and then my second shot, you can see how much more depth of field there is, right? See the difference there? It's tremendous, tremendous difference there. So if you're trying to get more depth of field and you know you want to print a certain size, just get a larger megapixel camera and back up, right? Then what you can do, this is what I was talking about with Capture One, is we can actually set so if you're doing that, clearly, you know, you don't want your client looking at it like, why are you so far away? So what you can do is click here on Capture One, and once you put the crop on there, it will actually stay, as long as you set it as such, it will stay for every future uh, shot, right? So whenever the client sees the next one pop up, they're just seeing that framing. That makes sense, guys? So nice and easy, further away, more depth of field, right? That's one of the major factors. So again, that's one reason why, and I made a video about it, why you want more high megapixel cameras or you don't need them, depending on what you're doing. Now that being said, that's all cool information. Hopefully you, that you understand a little better now, but I'm here and I might as well make a cool shot. So I actually think I'm gonna do the closer shot because I think I like the really shallow depth of field for this. It's not a project, I'm not trying to sell this car. I just wanna create something really interesting, right? So I'm gonna come in and give myself that nice shallow depth of field that I like. It's one of the fun things about shooting macro is that you can really, you know, get that crazy super shallow depth of field. So I'm gonna come in here. Nice and tight. Maybe not quite as tight as I was before, but close. I'm gonna come in. So this is good, like this kind of lighting, this, this kind of flat overhead lighting is really great if you're doing, you know, trying to sell something because it shows the detail really well. Uh, but if you want to do something more editorial, add a little drama, then we can really play around with. I'm going to focus on the same spot again, guys, uh, at least to start with. Um, but we will, uh, we'll see where it looks best once we get the, the final lighting in place. Okay, so there's our starting shot with the See, it kept that crop. <laughs> Told you. So we'll take that crop away. And again, with this camera, this you would not do this because uh, it, it just doesn't have nearly enough megapixels to, to do that. But with a larger camera, nobody's even going to notice that you're cropped in so tightly. But anyways, here we are. Uh, this is our car. Again, the shell field looks kind of cool, but it's kind of flat and boring. So I think what we're going to do is I have another light. 
right? And when you want to make something more interesting, you add more lights. So this is a, a DLED 7, so that's a, a bicolor LED. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my HMI, and I'm going to raise it up. I'll throw it on live view again for you guys. Cool. So clearly I raised it up and now it's dark, right? Because I'm creating, this is going to be my fill light now. I'm going to fill from above. Make sure this is nice and tight and in the position I want. And then I'm going to take my LED light and I'm going to make that kind of my key, but from the back. So I'm going to fire this thing up. And I think what I'm going to do is bring it around like this. And I'm just, it's a bicolor LED as, as mentioned. I think I'm just gonna dial it really warm, right? So we have this kind of warm light coming through the back. That looks pretty cool. I'm gonna bring it down like this. Nice kind of warm light coming in. Kind of bring it off to the side, get a nice angle. So of course, what I'm kind of doing is creating the shadow of the car where I want it, making the shadow kind of part of my composition, right? So I think that's interesting to do that. And what we can also do is use the barn door, because I have a barn door in the back. I'm gonna bring the barn door in and kind of let it give us a little bit more shadow in there, almost kind of causing a vignette. We can also do it a little bit in the front a bit, like that. I can also focus the light a bit if I want to add myself some, some more contrast there. All right, let's see what that looks like. All right, so that is looking pretty cool. Right now I'm keeping it a little on the dark side because I want it to feel kind of more like night. Right, we even have our cool shadows from our, uh, you know, from our overhead. Now, one more thing that could be interesting. Might just add a little bit. This is kind of a beat up silver reflector. Yeah, there we go. And the reason why I'm using a beat up silver reflector instead of like a good silver reflector is I kind of want it to be uneven a little bit, you know? It's just bouncing back a little bit of that warm light. Cause remember I'm bouncing the warm light in. So I don't want it to be perfect cause it wouldn't look right. All right, I'm killing that for a second so I can focus. Now I think I might actually, let's see, I'm gonna focus. I think I'm gonna change my focus pot and put it closer to the door. Them more interesting. See what that looks like. Yeah, let's try that. There we go. All right? We've got, again, it's still shallow. We're getting the front of it kind of out. And again, it's at the door, which is here. That's my focus. So this is the parallel line, right? So that's how shallow the field is. You know what's kind of interesting? Although I don't know what this lighting fit would be perfect, but let's see. You can actually see there's a steering wheel inside. So maybe it could be fun to focus on the steering wheel. about being this close as you can just reach in there and grab it. <laughs> Focusing on the steering wheel, just like that. You know, more or less, I'm kind of split the difference. Remember, there's only ever one spot that's absolutely in focus. So you gotta kind of figure out roughly where you want it. And then take the shot. Now that's kind of fun too, right? Now we've got the interior of the car and uh, it's a little smudge in there. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a neat thing. There you go. So that's kind of fun, guys. Um, actually, I think the whole thing's a little bit bright, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna give myself a little more shutter, or go a little slow, it's a 50th of a second. There we go, that feels better for me. You know, and honestly, like if you were doing this for some effect, you could probably put it on like, let's say a brown piece of paper or maybe black, you know, to get like asphalt feel or whatever you want. You could really mess around with this a lot. Um, I'm just kind of uh, giving you guys some examples as what could work here. 
So hopefully that answers those two questions. The soft with the size, it's not always about people, right? It's about soft to size no matter what. So if you want a soft light in a product, you gotta make sure it's bigger than the product. So this clearly is, right? Um, and the depth of field, right? Depth of field is super important. Have a camera with more megapixels if you want to be able to shoot uh, you know, small objects because that's gonna allow you to back up and crop. So thanks for watching guys. Be sure to subscribe to Adorama TV, hit the bell and everything so you see the future videos. Be sure to follow me, Daniel Norton Photographer, and I'll see you next time on set.